Give me a bit more energy, guys. This is the first session. <clears throat> check, check. Work? Okay. Um, so, guys, I am like really happy to host this session today because, uh, like, both yeah, both Sukanya and Ritnika, uh, they like I've been following her magazine, and of course, I've learned a lot from Ritnika. So the idea was always to kind of bring uh, music business education to all of you and to like you know like through you to the further community. So today we are going to talk about like music business to, uh, and about um, like as artists, all of us, how can we think internationally? How can we think uh, you know, like what's happening throughout the world? And how can we grow as individuals as well? So yeah, that's the session uh, all about. And a lot of musicians are here. We are joined by some more musicians. So yeah, like in the end, we'll have some Q&A. So I think we are open to some good Q&A, right? So yeah, um, so like, firstly, can we have a huge round of applause again for Sukanya and Ritnika? <coughs> so uh, like, starting off uh, with the first thing on the agenda is, so like Ritnika, you have done like you have worked with Guns and Roses, you have worked with like different kind of bands, and throughout the world you have done conferences. So like, how is the scene abroad and how is the scene in India? Like, as a like your perspective on different scenes. And what is the uh, like one thing that we can improve on? We can think uh, we can reflect upon better. Yeah. <clears throat> so I mean, th the good thing to understand is that the Indian scene has grown so much. I mean, I've been working in the Indian music industry now for 15 years, and when I first started, there were no management companies. There were no multi-stage festivals. We worked on the first multi-stage festival, and. Now, when you think about it, there are managers, there are festivals. I mean, look at this. I mean, this, you know, you have so many amazing things happening. So you, the most important thing to remember is that India is a growing market. You know, while in the West, it is to a certain degree already saturated. You know, you're already like, it's not like, hey, I'm going to start a festival and it'll be the biggest thing ever. There are like 50 billion other festivals already happening. But in India, you have the opportunity to try new things because we're still a growing market. And over the years that I've seen, it has grown so much. And now music business as a career, you know, is becoming more acceptable by our parents, which is a very important, <laughs> important thing if you really want it to kind of, you know, grow and evolve. So I think that's the biggest difference, you know, that we now have a lot more opportunities and there's a lot of room to grow. You know, we still need more festivals like this with combined different, you know, different forms of art. We, you know, we need more music education. We need more music business education. We need more PR companies. We need artists to start taking their careers more seriously. So there's a lot of room for improvement, definitely. But it's also very hopeful because there's so much that can actually grow and evolve. And um, so kind of like, what's your take like for the national scene? Like you have been covering a lot of artists, and like now you are uh, you have been in the festival two days now. So like, what is your observation of the whole country scene? And like, um, is it it's growing? But like, how do you think uh, in marketing? Is it growing that fast? Are are reaching out to you? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Just to add to what Ritika was saying. Uh, there's definitely a lot of evolution that has happened in just the last five years, in fact. Uh, during COVID, right after COVID, what we are also seeing is that there's a lot of brand interest for independent music and independent artists. I mean, at Ahaming Art, we, have, we are experiencing that firsthand. We've been covering independent music for five years. We did not have a lot of takers initially, but um, now there are a lot of success stories. There are a lot of successful artists which means that a lot of brands, a lot of bigger entities, labels are also looking at independent music as a viable, as a profitable uh, art form. Yeah. And since we are talking about business, that's a very important uh, thing that comes in. So the more and more money is also brought in to the business, I think that uh, obviously will help a lot more artists also grow. Yeah. Uh, so you know, like, uh, because you both talked about like the growing music business in India, and I think a lot of us here, like, you know, uh, we would want to like know more about like more ways in how many ways an artist can earn money. You know, like a lot of people think that it's only live shows, right? That like you know musicians just do live shows, okay? But what are brand deals? You know, like what are sync licensing? What is uh, something like uh, like royalties? You know, like all of those things. So if you can just have a, a slight overview on that from both of you, yeah. Sure. Um, actually, I would like the audience to get involved in this. What do you guys think an artist can do or a person can do in the music industry today? Come on, be a musician, we know that. 
What else? Come on, don't be shy. This is interactive. So there you go, licensing at, so that's called, you know, if you, you basically are licensing your music at uh, music stores, at television shows, on, at, on ad films and TV, you know, all of that. So that is called sync, sync licensing. That's a great way to make money if you're an artist. If you're composing music, you know, making sure your music is used by brands or ads or whatever, it's a great way to make money. What else? You can become a sound engineer. You can become a lighting engineer. You can be an artist manager. You can be a booking agent, which is very different from an artist manager, FYI. <laughs> that is my biggest pet peeve. You can, <laughs> you can work at a record label. You can do what I do, which is you can teach music business, or you can do live events. You can work for a digital distributor, which is releasing music through CD Baby, always. <laughs> or you can work for a publishing firm. You know, you can, you know, you can make money through publishing. You, which is your songwriter income. So there's so much actually you can do in the music industry if you want to work in the industry. And if you want to make money as an artist, you can make money from various sources. You know, you, you can make money from, like you said, licensing and sync. You can make money from recording your music and selling it via streaming platforms, via Bandcamp. You can sell merch. You can do publishing, which is your songwriter income. There's a lot you can do. Yeah, I'll just supplement that with an example, actually. Uh, earlier this year, we did an article on um, two songs. One was Geheraiya, uh, the title track, and one was Kamakshi Khanna's uh, single, Dur. Both of these songs uh, were placed in film, OTT, etc. And what we wanted to know was how did the placement of these songs impact the artist's visibility, their performance, their numbers uh, digitally. And the graph was insane. It was insane. I mean, in just three months, Ove had gained about four, four million monthly listeners on Spotify, which is insane. Uh, even Kamakshi gained a lot of numbers, and now both of them are getting a lot of opportunities, uh, not only commercial work, but also a lot of independent work that they're able to do. Um, at the same time, that's, like Ritinka said, that's not the only way to make money. But uh, the good thing is that a lot of filmmakers and showrunners are taking interest in independent music, which is a great thing. Also, just to add, there are a lot of new sync placement companies coming up in India. You know, there's companies like Dibble and stuff like that that work with artists to help get your music placed into TV shows and ad films. So you don't have to do things yourself if you don't know how to. You know, there are companies coming up, again, evolving business, growing market. Companies are coming up every day. There's something just, what, Fair Play or something just yeah, launched, yeah, yeah. which is, I think, does something similar. So there's loads of these companies coming out. So there's lots of opportunities. And as artists, you shouldn't just think, Acha, main, you know, I'll just play a gig and ho gaya, cover gig, ho gaya, khatam ho gaya. There's so much more you can do, you know. So, guys, like, uh, for all of you who didn't know the terms that we use, I mean, like, please Google them. Like, so the idea of this session is to just introduce you to the various possibilities that there are. Uh, so it's not only live shows that we do. There's a lot more things that we all can do together. And everything, you know, like, I think, um, like, so I am into, like, three, four different businesses. And what I've understood from business is that a growing market is a great time to enter market. Like, you know, like, if you are, like, I think if an artist in the country right now, it's one of the most fruitful times that has ever been, right? So yeah, please like uh, please go do Google uh, all of these things, and uh, so you know, like we were talking about like live shows and uh, other things. So are there any like, in, like in the country where are the sources that people can learn about all of this? Because like a lot of artists that I work with, they just think that you know, like my work is to make great music, okay, and like that's about it, right? And uske uh, baad sab kuch you know it's on the public. I will leave it to the world, right? So what do you think is the role of a professional musician? Like, like, what should their maybe day or monthly calendar like look like, think like, yeah. Well, you want me to go first? Yeah. yeah sure. Well, step one, you should buy my book. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Indie 101. Step two, you should enroll in my music business course. Then you're sorted. No, but, <laughs> no, but honestly, what you need is you have to understand, you know, this is my running joke that a person picks up a guitar, learns A, C, D, F, and like, ah, oh, now I can play. Achha, now I need a manager. Now I need a label. It doesn't work like that. Firstly, you don't need a manager, you don't need a label. What you need to do is understand how the business works. You have to understand that even if you have a manager, you never stop working. 
ये नहीं कि ओह आई जस्ट मेक म्यूजिक एंड माई मैनेजर द हसलर नो यू आर हसलिंग टूगेदर दैट इज वॉट हैपन्स वेन यू गेट अ मैनेजर वेन यू आर लुकिंग फॉर अ मैनेजर वेन यू आर फर्स्ट स्टार्टिंग आउट चांसेस आर यू गेट अ स्मॉल मैनेजर यू गन गेट अ probably not a very connected manager you can get lucky and get some you know big guys who are very well connected but the chances are you won't so that person is taking 15% of all your income and may not be adding as much value as you could do yourself so it doesn't make sense you should get a manager when you reach like a middle stage where you're making like say 40 50 60 000 bucks say a gig i'm just giving an example so that the 15% makes sense If as a manager I'm making one thousand rupees a show, how much work am I actually going to do for you? Think about it, right? So these are things you have to think about. You have to always understand the business yourself, so that the manager can work with you. If you don't understand your music, if you don't understand your audience, if you don't understand where your where you want to be in five years, I believe in the law of attraction. You got to have a five year plan. Be like, I want to headline NA Seven. Whatever is your dream, I don't care what it is. Then be like, okay, that's my five-year plan. How do I get there? What do I need to do today to get there in five years? And hold that vision. That's gonna keep you going, you know, at the end of the day. Yeah, that's that's it. Pretty much it. Yeah. Right here. Right here. He's been trained by me. There you go. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not joking. Right here, like there you go. Easy. <laughs> yeah. So like we we'll take the Q and A at the end uh, of the session. Okay. So like so that you know like we can have a more fruitful conversation that Q and A. Uh, like we have a, a couple of things to discuss. So you know like um, as you said, you know like until you reach that point where you can earn forty, fifty, sixty k, uh, and you know like that fifteen percent makes sense. Now there's another angle to look at it. That is fifteen percent enough. Like, uh, is that you know, like, is artist management an underpaid job? Like, because we were just having this conversation uh, with uh, Kunal the other day, so I was just like thought that we can just have a bit more conversation about this because some of us, you know, like, are need to become artist managers. You know, like, all there are people who you know kind of want to do that. So, do you think that's quite underpaid, or is it like all good? What's your stand on that? Uh, does your uh, does your course also have an artist management uh, section in it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because because my thing is that uh, while you were saying, I just realized that. Um, Artists also just end up picking any manager. Yeah, no, no. They like, do your research, understand artists, what a manager's job no, no. is. No, no. Our artist managers know how to make business plans and stuff. Also, <laughs> SWOT analysis. <laughs> no, but um, no. Um, <laughs> okay, I've spent ten years of my life managing artists. I managed to live on my own. I managed to travel once a year abroad because that's what I love doing. I don't really shop much, so that wasn't important. <laughs> I got free booze, so that was great. Uh, but uh, no, I don't think we're underpaid. The standard is 15 to 25 globally, hmm. which is why, as artist managers, you have to also pick artists for two reasons. One, who you're passionate about. All right, if you don't love their music, you are not gonna do a good job because after like listening to them 10 times, you're gonna be like, oh god, like I, you know, I'll have to go to another gig of this guy. Like so, firstly, you have to like their music. Secondly, you have to ask them: Can you exploit them? Not in a bad way, in a good way. Exploit in the music industry is a good term. Are they sellable? Sellable does not mean commercial. I'm not saying they have to be, I don't know, whoever the Bollywood person is. It just means: Can you sell them in various avenues to make money? For example, it's is it just okay? I can do shows with them. Say they play, they they play Hindi pop. I'm just giving a random example. Okay, Hindi pop is quite sellable in our country if they're a good band and they're tight and they can do well. Chalo, that's a great plus. Maybe the 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 members of the band are very good looking. Okay, maybe I can push them into the modeling side. Maybe they want to act. Maybe they one of them is a chef. Maybe we can do an online YouTube channel of cooking and that could be sold to Netflix. I don't know. I'm just coming up with random ideas. But what I'm trying to say is, this is how you should be thinking as a manager. It's not just like, "Ha, huh, I'll get them shows. I'll get my 15%." As a manager, you're making 15% of everything, not just shows. So you have to think of them as a brand. How can I sell their brand and associate their brand with other brands that work for them, and then make money? So that's how you have to think. And I think, yeah. If you, if you, you know, you can make a lot of money. You can make no money. It depends on how good you are. Yeah. And also, if the manager can give some unbiased feedback to the artist on their music. 
Yeah, I think like that is one the team work should happen and exactly. it should be like both ways. Yeah. yeah. Like this is that uh, what the artist can do more and what the manager also can do more. Yeah. And you know like uh, through this whole conversation about that uh, you know like until you reach that point, right? So a lot of people think that the only way to reach that point is online marketing. You know, like like everybody's trying to get on Instagram and like you know like uh, make like music very frequently and post every day almost, right? So is that the only way you know, like, uh, so that you know, like people can listen to you, you can have more reach or are there more ways for like new artists who you know, like maybe don't have a social media manager or they don't have that sense of social media, right? So like I think... Yeah, that's your job. Um, like, that's your thing. <laughs> I mean, we cannot deny how important it is. Obviously, social media is really important. The maximum amount of discovery is happening on social media. Um, Anybody who's giving, who's going to give you work, whether it's live shows or whether it's um, a sync deal, etc. Everybody is looking at your Instagram follower count. So we cannot deny the importance of that. Uh, that being said, not everybody has to uh, make that make content creation their main goal and main agenda. You have to obviously focus on your art as well. But then, if that's not your thing, you have to figure out what your thing is. Go to festivals like this. Um, go to do as many gigs as you can. So there are obviously other ways. Yesterday we met uh, an artist who, actually we met a, a fashion designer who's making textile, for, who's making merchandise for a singer-songwriter uh, in the um, Indian textile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found that very interesting. That's a very, very fresh take. Like, it's very different from, you know, your typical black t-shirt with the band name on it, <laughs> merchandise. So, like, if you can just be creative and find what your thing is, I think there are various ways of doing that. But I, I just cannot deny the importance of uh, social media at the same time. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've had artists like Tritha and stuff, who I remember, this is many years ago, she, cause she was touring uh, France and she made these really cool leather pouches like, you know, really nice ones that, I mean, of course, they cost, cost money, so she had a limited edition, mm -hmm. but she put her CD at that time, CD, in there. Mm -hmm. So people were spending more, not just for the CD, but also to buy that whole right. thing. So it became right. like a like a package deal. No one's just yeah. going to buy a T-shirt anymore, unfortunately, yeah. right? Yeah. But yeah, when it comes to social media, you know, it, it's not rocket science. Like, I had to start pushing my own social media handle because of the work I do, because I do workshops and stuff like that. So, you know, you, you need people to show up. And in the beginning, I'm like, oh, God, I have to take a selfie. Like, oh, God, like, you know, like, but now I'm like, oh, selfie, you know, like, whatever. <laughs> but the point is, when you start doing it, you get used to it. And it shouldn't be forced. You have to understand that you don't have to ape or copy what the other guy is doing, right? You have to ask yourself, every one of you right now, all of us, we're a brand. Right? Every single one of you is a brand. Your brand is what you stand for. Are you into music? Are you into cooking? Do you, are you vegan? Are you, do you love chicken? I don't know. Whatever you're into, that is who you are. So your social media page doesn't have to be only music. It's about you. Like if you go to my Instagram, you'll see obviously music. You will see travel. You'll see a lot of my dog. You know, so you'll be like, okay, this is who Ritnika is. She likes to travel. She loves, she works in music. She talks about weird healing crap. And she loves her dog, you know. And that is who I am as a brand. You know, simple as that. So you can easily come up with content. You don't have to be a content creator. You just post about your life and what you love. That's it. Yeah, like last four years have been a constant struggle of do I really need to build my personal brand? Will people not look at my work if I don't build my personal brand? And that's the, I, I feel like, I mean, it, it's even more important for musicians. Yeah. Anybody because, in the creative because field. Back, you know, when we first started, it wasn't, there was no social media. Like at least when I first started, you know, when the dinosaurs roamed the earth. <laughs> uh, there was no social media. Like I remember like Facebook had just come out when I was graduating college. So, I mean... It wasn't, it was important, but it wasn't like, oh my God, Ritnika's brand was created because of social media. But now it's become so important. You know, like we have, we have, I'm going to say this is being recorded, but we have influenzas and I call them influenzas for a reason because that's how they make their money, you know, and it's become a business and it's a very lucrative business, right? So unfortunately now social media and your own brand building is very important. That's the way it is now. Can't help it. Just like bringing it back to music and musicians a little bit, every brand is looking at the number of reels that are being made on songs and deciding who's a successful artist. So, yeah. I'm making my first reel this week and I'm very excited. <laughs> Hopefully. I mean, I don't know if I'll manage, but check it out. <laughs> oh, wow. 
See, this is how you promote your social media handle. Did you just see that? <laughs> <laughs> so, you like this, uh, like, th that's a very interesting uh, take that you like just put everything about your life. You like, you don't have to kind of think out of the box. So, I think that, that mindset that whatever you are doing is of worth and like the people who are listening to you, okay, they're not only listening to your music, they want to know more about you as a individual, as a human being, right? And uh, I think a lot of people, you know, uh, for their marketing plans, they only think in terms of cover design, cover, all of these things. But they don't even kind of think that whatever I'm doing today is also the authenticity that I have in my daily life can also be a part of my daily uh, marketing plan. So, uh, like, what do you think is a market, good marketing plan, like, uh, in a very, like, a one-on-one -on -one way, in a two-minute way, like, should include and how, how uh, like, before the release, it should start? Because a lot of people, uh, like, I work with here, like they call me 15 days before the release. That you know, like, let's do something. A show plan, करते हैं क्योंकि अभी गाना आने वाला है. So when should it start? Uh, ideally, uh, in your mind, and like when they can reach out to you, how can they reach out to Ahmed Heart? Like yeah, a bit more on that. If uh, your visual identity is the first thing that we see when we re uh, receive press kits. Before listening to the song, your cover art is what we see. Um, it might not be as important. A cover art is not as important as it used to be because now it's not going on a CD cover. It's a small thumbnail, but um, on your social media, it's a big thing. It's very, it's obviously the biggest part of it. So um, it's crucial to your, uh, to you selling your music. Um, you may not have the budget to make a music video, but you can do a bunch of DIY things that that can attract an audience on Instagram, YouTube, or any of the visual platforms. Um, but these things have to be conceptualized well in advance while you're making the song, or once your song is done, you know what you've come up with, and you can supplement that with something that goes very well with that. So uh, you can't think about it like five days before the release or 15 days before the release. It's something that has to happen in tandem with the uh, song creation itself. Otherwise, it will feel very manufactured. Um, Last year, la yeah, last year, F-16s, this Chennai band, they released an EP. Just check out their pictures, check out their music videos. Obviously, very well produced, and it's a very high level of production, but you know that they've put a decent amount of thought in the visual identity, and it stands out. Um, even before you listen to the song, you're already impressed by the visuals. And that already, you know, creates, you've already made your judgment, that ye acha hoga. So, it goes a long way. When it comes to like videos, like you, you know, it depends on your budget. Firstly, as an indie artist, you're not going to have a lot of money. And I know people who you're not an F16, you know, if you are great, but if you, do, if you, do, if you're not at that level and you still want videos, there's a great app called Rotor, R-O-T-O-R. It's like $20 or something like that. I, uh, there's a shortcut if you go to, you, on CD Baby's thing, but otherwise you can Google them and you can find them. Um, basically, you can make a bunch of videos using stock footage. So instead of having one eight lakh rupee wala video, you can have like 50 videos for the same song that you can use for your social media plan. And when it comes to how to release, first of all, most artists spend months, maybe years, writing a song, recording a song. And then they want to release it in a week. Why? Why? What's the hurry? Why do you want to rush the release? It's their birthday. Great. But then plan it backwards. <laughs> you know what I mean. I get this a lot. Hey, I uploaded it today and I want it out by next week. Can you pitch it to playlists? I'm like, no. <laughs> like, you know, no. <laughs> like the answer is no. Simple. Is it going to do well? No. It's not going to do well. Like, so that you have to for, think of it this way. You need content for when you're promoting a single or an album. How do you make content? Well, when you're recording the album, behind the scenes footage. That's when you're thinking, okay, yes, sir, I could use pictures. This is, oh, look at me fighting with my bandmate. Look at me writing a song and throwing it away. Look at me breaking a G-string. Does anybody else have a G-string? I don't know, whatever the case may be, you could come up with stupid, I know a band I used to manage used to say that on stage all the time. That's why I remember that line. But like, you have to start thinking at least six months pele. So when I have my students make a plan for marketing for an album or whatever, for an album especially, six month plan. You need to do research. You need to have a list of every music blog, every music magazine. 
when are you making that when are you you need to find out who's who to contact there how early they take submissions you know you need you have to figure out okay how long does it take for playlisting okay do i want a newspaper article or whatever how when do they uh, magazines print magazines still go one month two months pehle you know they put lock their content down so these are things you have to think long term if you want to release your say a single in your first artist first song ever on the 1st of november you should have started your social media pages one year pehle and you should have been consistent for at least 6 months so you have a fan following if you don't have a fan following the only people listening to your lovely song is going to be your parents so that is the most important thing so you don't have to rush it you need to think smartly and uh, if any of you feel like you're limited by the budget always remember that just like you are an aspiring musician there are aspiring filmmakers there are aspiring videographers photographers graphic designers who are always looking for work and that's when you can get extremely collaborative and just come up with the best shit exactly and then you can cross promote each other yeah yeah so like the idea when we started this community of us was that you know like so there a lot of people uh, you know like in the music scene who are struggling so a lot of people in the graphic design scene who are struggling everybody struggling right in every scene let's struggle together yeah so like that was the idea exactly. that if we struggle together it makes more sense yeah because you know like i need someone and someone needs me so like you know like just connect and be more compassionate and empathetic towards everyone yeah. right so uh, like that was the whole idea that we started the community with yeah. and uh, like i remember when i was promoting my first open mic like we were doing this small 30 people open mic and i reached out to this uh, uh, guy who was a uh, fashion designer he said yeah mera mera open mic mein koi kaam nahi hai theek hai and like i could never understand that like how an artist can say no to attend an art event right like for me fashion design is also an art and music is also an art so the i think that uh, one perspective is what has led to this community that you know like people who are sitting here they are you know kind of we want uh, everyone to be versed with three four art forms meet all the other artists so do you think you know, like in the whole scene nationally internationally is it a trend that all artists no matter what the art form is they gel together they kind of you know like uh, they work together or there's a there's a uh there's a kind of a collective you know like uh, that that's my industry that's my community mm. so yeah what's your take because like i've only been to jaipur but like yeah you have you both have i mean it's not really like an official thing that yeah. oh, we work together but it's always considered kin you know like you said we all suffer together so you do feel more comfortable reaching out to another artist of any kind yeah. over like a lawyer or an accountant or i don't know whoever because you don't feel like they are you know a thing it is certain places in the world like i've been to certain uh, countries where it is very you know open and collaborative and some places it's not uh, but in india it is very needed because like i said it is still a developing country and we having in a developing industry as a whole so we do need to help each other out and you can only get a, you know we have so much of like um competition within each field your know, music art whatever but the industry is so tiny ki kitna compete karoge matlab like you're just eating into your own this thing you rather work together and evolve to a point where you can compete yeah. you know like i when i started my management company we it was like i think i had one i was my company maybe oml was there that was it there was nothing and then over the years people started coming but i've never like oh my god he went for my artist oh my god i'm losing it was always like theek hai you want to go with my friend no worries we'll i'll be i'll work i'll get you show through as a booking agent whatever or someone is trying to nobody is we are not trying to poach each other's artists because we all want to grow i mean there are some people who try to do shady things like that uh, but they eventually get washed out of the industry cuz that's what happens if you work together you will stick on longer than the others simple as that yeah i think we're at a very interesting stage where we are small enough that everybody wishes to cheer each other on at the same time we are growing at a pace that um new opportunities are being created every day so there is a bunch of things to do and there is there's a lot of discovery to happen um so i think it's a very nice place to be at right yeah, now i think like when one gets discovered you know once on the bunch get discovered they all carry you like he, they look carry at, everyone look at, along look at yeah. look at the hip hop scene look at what happened with divine suddenly everybody is like oh my god yeah. like you know yeah, yeah, yeah. same with the singer songwriter yeah. space also yeah, yeah one, one success one story one particular word and exactly. everybody is like <laughs> yeah. and i think like uh, that's not only like you know like of course in the same uh, homogeneous art form that happens but i think also uh, the guy who shot patik kohar's videos 
the guy who you know, like who was the art director for that video yeah. like i think everyone you know they, then starts to kind of pick up exactly even, even the people in the video the actors yeah. and all of that you know yeah. exactly. so like the idea of you know like uh, what i kind of uh, believe in is that you know like all of us like should you know like go out and meet more people from any art form yeah. go to art galleries like you know like yeah. if you are an artist like just go to art galleries go to you know kind of uh, pop ups go to because you don't know you know like it's not even networking it's also inspiration you never know where your next song is going to come from yep you know like or if you're if you're a painter you never know where your next picture is going to come from your next f- f- photograph is going to come from whatever you know it's inspiration is life and meeting people from different walks of life is how you grow and evolve yeah and collaborating with different artists is always inspirational anyway so yeah. also so uh, like uh, i was uh, like so for this event we are fortunate to have the department of art and culture of the astana as a partner so i was sitting with the joint secretary and we were having a discussion about why like, he wanted to understand you aap kya kar rahe ho like he thought that ye kyun kar rahe ho aap hai to fir kya kar rahe ho so you know he said that like jaise jaipur uh, so like jaipur has one of the biggest it you know like uh, startup hubs uh, yeah like we nobody knows about that but like that's on paper uh, like i have also been there so like there are around like 100 startups there so he said that we know we need more art panels okay in the mm-hmm. city okay so now like uh, one thing that i want to discuss is that every indie artist should think of themselves as an artist plus entrepreneur you know, like uh, like is that the way forward that you know, like we think of okay this is my music time like or you know, like my the my music routine and this is my entrepreneurial time where i think about promoting where i think about you know, like deals or collaborations or networking yeah so like is that uh, like you know where we are that everyone should think in terms of entrepreneurs i mean it, yeah i mean you could call yourself an entrepreneur i used to always call myself a business person i don't know why i never like i was okay. never an entrepreneur oh, baad mein term aaya ah, <laughs> you know right. but uh, but it's more about like it's just how do i push my brand and it's not even that it's also like you may have a day job say you could be a musician and still love to paint on the side or still love to be a fashion designer or whatever right so you can do multiple things at the same time as an artist you're not just restricted to okay i'm making music that's it people forget someone like a pratik kuhar who has a manager and everything is still hustling to this day he doesn't stop hustling you know uh, arjun vagle who's you know who's doing so well you know as a producer as a dj whatever is still hustling he has a he has a record label he had a management company called unmute or, you know you can do multiple things so whether you want to call yourself an art 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 well, i can't say it yeah. you can call yourself a, you know a business person and an artist or you want to call yourself just somebody who's a hustler whatever you want to call yourself you know but you should think more than just one stream plus it's good to diversify your income in case you know covid happens or some funny business happens again <laughs> like i'm so glad i had like my my cd baby job because my festival stopped my studio stopped i was like uh how do i make money now <laughs> like you know cuz you diversify you do multiple things yeah yeah i mean uh as long as it does not make you stop loving the art that you're into you have to kind of do it but yeah it's easy to fall out of love with your art if you make it work uh it's very tough for us to love music still because we have to listen to a lot of music every day yeah. and it's a very exhausting job i actually don't like going to gigs anymore <laughs> exactly uh-huh. but i've been doing this for 22 years so bahut dekh liya hai like it's like let's go for dinner there's a band playing i'm like no 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 i want a nice quiet dinner where i can talk yeah. Yeah. like <laughs> it is very exhausting and it's very easy to fall out of love with the art whether you're working on the business side or the creative side so as long as you can keep that going especially for the artist i mean it's it's easier for us to let it go but obviously an artist cannot do that so yeah, yeah, yeah. well uh, so i think like uh, that's pretty much it like one just a uh, last thing so like uh, like you talked about that cd uh, like uh, that cd case that you know like uh, titha was taking to fans now i think you like uh, uh, like as artists who are starting off you know like what all can we think of as merge you know, like maybe what all we can do you know like maybe just more than music what are the ways that you know like uh, and how can we find that is it accessible to everyone like you know to kind of make something special or different i think it's just about a i mean the internet is a great source to kind of check out what people all over the world are doing you know um, like for example if you look at any stats like um, lps you know records are coming back if you feel you have that audience like especially the electronic music scene has that audience a pratik kuhar would have that audience for example that might be something interesting to do you know what i mean so it's just about kind of thinking you know 
outside the box and also checking out what other people all over the world are doing. It may not be the same thing, but it might give you an idea. Um, a friend of mine, Malvika, she runs a PR company called Big Beat. And I know she was working with an artist who released a song called, or album called Dollhouse. And I remember, and this is not to do with merch, but this is to do from the PR angle. What, what they did was they made little dollhouse invites and that was sent to all the music journalists with like goodies and all that saying, oh, the album's coming out. Now, you know, mm. we all love to be bribed. <laughs> <laughs> so like when someone is sending you a cute little doll out, they're like, Achha, ab likhna padega inke mein. <laughs> you know how it is. Or, that's how it works, you know. Or if you're doing an event, uh, you always make sure you invite the journalist so you know they have to write about you. <laughs> Just the way it is. But, you know, there's so much you can actually do. And ask yourself what you like. Everybody's different. Say maybe, um, okay, so um, say you are into cooking, right? So you can have your own specialized aprons because you love music and you have you can have aprons because you, you, you like cooking. So everybody's merch can be different, you know, and aprons so anybody can use if something cool written on it, you know, so things like that. I'll take my example, if I may. Um, at, uh, at A Humming Heart, we have an annual magazine, a print magazine. It's been a while since uh, print magazines have been in circulation for music. Um, and we knew that we may not have a lot of takers for that. So we knew that we need it to look cool. Like nobody cares what's actually written in it. That comes later. We need it to look cool. So you hire the right designer, you hire the right people and uh, you give them the brief and all of that. But even beyond that, we realized that it can't be just the magazine. Nobody is going to pay us just for the magazine. So we spoke to the designer and we understood how we can, you know, make it a, a, a little more wholesome. So he designed a postcard, a bookmark, a tote bag, an envelope. So all of those things combined together made it look like a very decent package that people are willing to pay for. So we had to add to the magazine itself. Our main content is obviously whatever is written inside, but then we had to add stuff to it to make it a little more sellable. I mean, to be, I don't think any of you were alive back then, but when we were younger, there were music magazines and they used to all give stickers and posters of like, I, I don't know if I want to say this, but I remember my parents used to buy me all these magazines from the States and I had a huge gigantic poster of Nick Carter from Backstreet Boys in my bedroom for like the longest time till I, re till I discovered rock and roll and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> but uh, the point is, it used to come free in the magazine. The center fold was always, even I think RSJ used to do that back in the day. So it was always a thing. It's just now you have to just build on that, right? What does today's generation want? You know, like you know, with all these NFTs and all that, but like, what do they actually want? Like, do they want something they can have on their phone or is there something they can have tangible? You have to put yourself in the shoes of your audience and everyone's audience is different. If you're making classical music, your audience is a different audience. Same kind of swag is not going to work that a, like a punk rock band would, would give out, you know? So you have to put yourself in the shoes of your audience and be like, okay, what do they like? And how can I tap into that? Yeah. I mean, I hate it when people call music content and um, products. But at the end of the day, you're selling your work. And, yeah. and you have to understand what your audience wants and what will they pay for. Everything is sellable. Everything is sellable. <laughs> yeah. And I think you know, like, uh, like the mere fact that it's sellable does not mean it's bad. You know, like it yeah. does not make it... You know, like, yeah. There's a whole process of creating it with authenticity yeah. and honesty. Yeah. And the same thing is with selling. I think I don't think sales, you know, like is a bad thing to do. Sales is a great thing because business changes the world. It's also the term sellout. I think people yeah. go, were like, oh, he's a sellout or whatever. I'm like, listen, okay, I, this is an example I like to use. Is like someone is playing in a cover band in a hotel. They're like, oh my god, look at him, he's a sellout, and I play original music in my basement and whatever, right? And I'm like looking at him. I'm like, dude, he's playing music all day long. He's better than being an accountant. Like, in my head, you're still doing what you love. It doesn't matter if you're playing a cover thing in a shadi or you're playing, at a, at, you're playing originals at a pub. It, you're doing music. You're doing art. It's so much better than being an accountant. Like, that is my standard Until example. you love accounts. Like, I mean, until you have to do accounts. Then you're like, shit, I need an accountant. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I think that's, you know, like, so the idea is, guys, like, do any kind of art that you want to do. Just put, you know, like... Um, uh, be authentic, be honest with it, and also understand it's a business after all. And if you want to do it for a long run, right, like you have to make it sustainable. 
and for that you need more team you need more people so go out meet more people and i think like busking or you know, like meeting people in festivals or on the street also gives you a very good idea about what your audience is like uh, like i so i wrote a book 10 years back and like uh, so it was a poetry book and i didn't know how to sell it okay like i just got it published somehow self published and now i like i had this big you know, like 5 minute copies in my bedroom and i don't know what to do so what i started doing is i started to go to you know, like all these uh, i was in bangalore then to these community center these parks cafes and i used to you know, like meet any two people who are chatting and i used to go to them ki whatever talking about tell it to me okay i'll write a poem on that and give it to you okay and like if you like that poem you can also buy my book which is for 150 rupees so in two years i met around 8000 people and i was able to sell my 500 books okay and so like what what important thing i learned from that is that the most people who bought my book were artists themselves like you know some kind of artists like uh, some was a filmmaker a designer a uh, you know like a theater person and now they are all my friends now i know that whenever i put my second book out i have already an audience waiting of you know a good 1000 people so i think that uh, that also gives me insight about avas that you know like i can make something where all artists come together because we understand so by the way what you did was a entrepreneur move huh <laughs> completely <laughs> ultimately that is who i am <laughs> yeah um so like for me that the going out thing busking that taught me a lot about you know like what the audience actually thinks like because sometimes we are just too much in our head on our instagram that you know, like this how the world works but when you actually step out in the road and like you know like meet people in parks and like okay the world is a pretty nice place they want to invest in art yeah like so yeah that's the idea and now we'll open it up for any kind of q and a for yeah are you guys still alive yeah like just you care about us <laughs> yeah just press oh, yeah it's on hi thank you so much for the session i love the design by the way of humming art oh, i've been meaning to buy it for so long just thank you because of the design because i don't know what's written inside but it's so appealing <laughs> so that's how i want i hope buy. you read it as well <laughs> yeah, yeah i will once i get it for sure <laughs> thank but my you my question was like art to a very huge extent is subjective like what i like you might not like what you like i might not like and magazines try to get everything on paper you know these artists new artists and stuff like that and i've also been making music videos in jaipur and all of that stuff and i found out about humming art cuz i was like you know I, i wish the music video comes on there and something like that and that's what i was confused about like how do you guys um sort of decide who has to get on the magazine because i'm sure whoever is writing or whoever is deciding what song comes out or what music video comes out has a certain eye for design or has a certain eye for that sort of art but like where does it get subjective and where does it get objective and what are those objective rules that you think when you're putting it onto the uh, paper that's a great question so uh, in the mag- the magazine comes only at the end of the year and that's a more of an editorial a very small subset of whatever we do throughout the year throughout the year we write about music on our website through reviews interviews podcasts youtube channel etc um it's a tough thing to it's a tough rope to walk being you know ignoring the subjectivity and try to be as objective as you can especially when we are doing reviews when when we are doing album reviews it becomes a it's a very big task to get over the biases and uh, be as objective as you can uh, it is an art form we are humans and we consume art in different ways everybody has different in- interpretations of it um but on a day to day basis what actually happens is that uh, we are a small team but what we've tried to do we've uh, tried to build a team of writers that understand different aspects of music different styles of music different languages of music so we know who to assign what um unfortunately we are not at the stage where we can cover everything that comes out obviously we would love to cover everything give a critique on whether this is good bad or ugly um for everything that comes out but we're not at that stage yet where we can cover everything we don't have enough writers at the moment but one of the ways that we've tried to overcome that is to um, bring in writers who bring in something different to the table all of them and uh, we have built a database we invite musicians uh, to fill out this form and we've shared that form with all of our writers and writers are free to pick and choose from there and decide whatever they want to write about um in whatever they in whatever form they want to write about it um through an interview do they want to speak to the artist do they want to review it do, do they want to critique it so that's that's one of the ways that we've tried to overcome that yeah. <laughs> so uh uh in like in between you talked about you know an artist should start 
preparing their portfolio, their social media, at least one year back before they publish. And so, like, I have a two-part question, basically. So first is, uh, what, like, how important is it for an artist to manage themselves first before, like, hiring someone to do this job for them? And what, like, what, according to you, is the right time for an artist to realize, yeah, they need someone to manage them or help them out with this stuff? It is very important for you to learn to manage yourself. <clears throat> because if you don't know, if you just leave it up to somebody else, then your career is not in your hands, right? Uh, when do you need a manager? Like I said, you need to get, you need a manager when you've done everything and anything you can do yourself. And then you're like, okay, now I need somebody. But it's not like, Achha, I ek sh ek show kalia. oh my God, it's so tough to post every day, so I'll just hire somebody. That's different, right? Like I said, if you're making enough money to have another person on your team, whether it's a manager, whether it's a PR person, whether it's whoever it is, you have to ask yourself, how much are they going to be making? A, is it worthwhile for me to spend that kind of money if it's a flat fee or if it's whatever? B, is it going to be good enough incentive for them to put in their hard work? I mean, like I said, if you're doing shows for 5,000, 10,000 rupees, a manager makes 15%. He can't even full tank his car or bike or whatever, whatever, right? Or she, whatever. So how much effort are they going to put, right? Because you have to understand a manager makes 15%. 15% of zero is zero, right? So, you have, so then they have to manage multiple artists. And even then, it depends on how big or small they are. So if you want a good manager who actually knows what they're doing, they will charge at least, say, they need to be able to make at least 15, 20,000 bucks a month, na, at least, to be able to make it justified. So you have to ask yourself, when am I reach that level? Until then, you manage yourself so you know exactly what you can tell the manager, that this is where I have to go. This is what I have figured out is my audience. This is what I have figured out works for me. This is where I suck and I need your help. Thank you. So, uh, the intensity of my question is uh, deeper than the question itself. <laughs> so, I, I come from a field where uh, I am the middle person in the entire scene. I, I have keen interest in music, but I have been a marketer and a planner and, you know, strategist by profession. So, now I want to dive more into the music space. I have been doing corporate events for seven years. I want to get into more of art events and music festivals. My question is, when you are a first-timer, when you're, you know, diving in the industry and you're a first-timer, how do you get the pitch? Because whether you're an artist, whether you're a manager, core of every work is sales. You can't deny that. So, when you want to, you, you know, when you want to project yourself as someone who's very keen on doing something, but you don't have enough content, because everybody out there in the market wants to see who you have been. I... I mean, you can't be unrelated and convince somebody. It doesn't actually make sense on the receiving end. So what do you have to say to such people who are in first timers in the industry who want to bring everyone under the same umbrella and, you know, kind of create that space? So what, what's your take on that? Go ahead and work with people who are already doing it. We all started, I'm, I'm, I'm using the word internship, you don't have to call it an internship, but we all started by working with established people in a particular field. Because that was the best way to A, make contacts and to sort of get your credibility that, hey, I've done this, I've done that, you know. I got, I started doing concerts in college. So when I came to India, I had already done like a shit ton of concerts, you know. But it was just something I did. It, I wasn't getting paid for it, but I have like Maroon 5 on my resume and I was like, hey, it's because I don't know what it was time, but whatever the case may be, right. So it's just things like that. So. Maybe not intern, but collaborate. Say, next next edition of Awad, I'm just giving an example. Be like, hey, can I help out? Can I offer some assistant? You know, can I handle some part of it for you? Then that goes on your resume. That goes on your portfolio. And that's how you start, you know, you do little, little work with other people till you're ready to do branch out. I'll just uh, add to that, that um, we, all the applications that we get, are always from people who say that, hey, we love music, we're really passionate about music, please hire us, we want to work with a music company. But there's a whole other skill set that is required to work in a music company, no matter what the company does. 
uh, and the fact that you realize that, that your pitch, al uh, pitch already involves sales is a one step ahead. So, great. <laughs> yeah. And since you've been doing events, you have that knowledge. You just need to now get into, just get get into the right circle. Yeah. So the best would be to collaborate and work collaborate. for some people for a while. Like, you know, offer your services to people who are doing things like that. We are open. Like, yeah. you know, we are open to more volunteers, more applicants. You know, like, we have, like, the whole community is being built off such, like, amazing people who just want to contribute to the scene and, like, learn. And I think that helps all of us grow together. So I think, yeah. like, this, like, because you also have seven years of experience, so we can also learn a lot from you. So the idea is simple that you know, like we all build something together for the city or for the whole industry. So yeah, you are welcome yeah, sure. all the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, there is a question at the back uh, from my friend. Uh, can somebody pass the mic to him? Yeah. Oh, anybody else who has the question? Okay. Yeah, sure. Ma'am, I was asking ki agar aap kisi artist ko manage karne ke liye dekh rahe ho, agar wo artist in person behavior wise acha uh, nahi in chance but uh, he is getting number uske music form jo hai wo achhi hai uska jo fan base hai wo loyal hai uske liye to aap kisko prefer zyada karoge jo numbers zyada la ke de raha hai jo aapke business mein profitable hai ya jo in person human in person matlab performance wise ke aadmi wise uh, as a personality matlab <laughs> what do you think i will answer to that numbers mean nothing मैं किसी से काम नहीं कर सकती जिसके साथ मेरा वाइब जेल नहीं होगा सिंपल दैट्स माई बट इट्स अ पर्सनल चॉइस हाँ सम पीपल विल वर्क क्योंकि पैसे मिल रहे हैं तो आपको पूछ रहा है कि मेरे लिए क्या इंपॉर्टेंट है पैसा इंपॉर्टेंट है कि आई डोंट नो वॉट दीस ऑफ माइंड इंपॉर्टेंट है वॉट्स यूर टेक ऑन दिस आई विल ऑलवेज गो फॉर पीस ऑफ माइंड मैंने बहुत सारे बड़े चीज फेस्टिवल आर्टिस्ट से काम नहीं किया है क्योंकि फर्स्ट मीटिंग से वाई भी नहीं अच्छा बन रहा था सो फॉर मी आई डू म्यूजिक कज आई लव म्यूजिक अदरवाइज आई कुड बिकम एन अकाउंटेंट सो वाइब अच्छा होना चाहिए पीस ऑफ माइंड होना चाहिए थैंक यू मैम हेलो साउंड चेक हाय माय नेम इज निमर सो माय क्वेश्चन इज यू टॉक्ड अबाउट दैट नोइंग योर ऑडियंस नोइंग योर पीपल so uh, it's not important that a singer or a musician is always a musician like he's he can be a painter he can be a event manager he loves um, like fashion and all that uh, stuff so it can affect the portfolio of musician like you can't know like you are working you are putting out content uh, on or your all the art forms on the social media it will affect your audience like like uh, take off my example i i am all into that stuff but uh, it's like uh, i don't know my audience what like i put every content out so i how would i know like it's an asset or a liability so you don't have to put every content out you can pick one or two things that kind of go together for example if say you're into fashion and you're an artist if you feel that the two merge together and your art is inspired by your music and your music inspires your art then you can have one page for it or you can have two separate pages for it have two separate brands for it one is you as an artist as a you know individual and one is you as a fashion designer for example and you have a brand for example i have a company my my MG, people say do you work for mgmh i always say no i am mgmh because that is my company that is also my brand but as my company and then is me you know so it's it's up to you there's no right or wrong answer you have to ask yourself is that a liability or not anything else you could no i think that covers it yeah thank you uh, so much thank you like we are, so like two more questions uh, i think yeah the ones there and can like, you pass the mic here yeah <laughs> you just wanted to check the sound i thought you had a question i think he has a question oh check <laughs> सो दिस इज अट ऑफ अ टेक्निकल क्वेश्चन मैं इसके बारे में ईमेल करने वाला था आपको बट देन आई थॉट की सो बेसिकली आई एम वर्किंग विद अ प्रोड्यूसर राइट नाउ सो आई हैव रिटर्न माई सॉन्ग एंड आई हैव कम्पोज माई सॉन्ग तो ऑल ऑफ द राइट्स हैव विद मी बट एट द सेम टाइम आई वॉन्ट टू शेयर फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ माई रॉयल्टीज विद दैट प्रोड्यूसर इज देर अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दैट वी कैन वी कुड रन आउट ऑफ दिस और प्लस इज देर एन ऑटोमेटिव वे from my distributor like cd baby and something like that ki wo mere ye royalties distribute karenge so there are two things first of all you sh any time you're working as a band in a band or you're collaborating with someone you must always 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 have a contract 
It can just be a simple email agreement between two people. If you go to my website, mgmh.net, you can download sample contracts for free, which you can edit and make your own. But the idea is simple agreement. We have worked on the song. I own the copyright, but I'm willing to give you 50% of the royalties. Second step, royalty the kahan ka de rahe ho? Distribution ka de rahe ho? Ya publishing ka de rahe ho? Ya dono de rahe ho? So there are two sides. Right? If you're giving publishing also, then he become part owner of the song. So probably that's not what you're doing. And I'm assuming you have not figured out publishing yet. We have to do a publishing workshop, Ankush, here. Because <laughs> that is a new topic to be taught. But when it comes to the distributor side, of course, you, every distributor is different. With CD Baby, the account holder ke bank mein paise aate. So aap ke bank mein paise aayenge, it tells you exactly how much that song has made. It's up to you how much percentage you want to give him. You just pay, pay that to him. You can show him the receipt, you know. So as some have automatic thing. This, I feel, is better to kind of decide on your own and do it because just in case kuch extra spend ho gaya, ye artwork ka ye ho gaya, wo, all of that. But either which way, you must always have a contract. Thank you. So guys, I think uh, one, oh, like, we, have two we have two questions. Okay, one <laughs> here. Uh, and one in the last row and one here now. We're running short of time, guys, so like, let's... Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Like, just just Hello. For other people. Check. Uh, we can always go out after this and you can keep asking us questions. Yeah. Uh, so, ma'am, my name is Asur and uh, I came all the way back from Neemach, Madhya Pradesh. Especially this event, I am very beautiful. Uh, my question is that my graduation was Pune Pune and when I was there, so I am a rapper. So, I got a lot of gigs and a lot of shows and a lot of good scenes on my Spotify and on every distribution site, everything was good. But due to some family emergency, I had to go back to my home in my small town. And there is a dad's business that I had to handle. I am managing my music in the studio with my camera. But the only thing is, the vibe of my songs, they were all about bangers. So the crowd was the crowd of my locality. It's not vibing with it so much. I won't say vibing, but my friends were on it. So what do you think about that? It's not growing. And I think that the gigs and the scene is a little bit off. So what do you think about that? 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 So how can I break this barrier that I can cross it and grow it? Thank you. It doesn't matter where you're based. Yeah. It's pr firstly, promotion is global. It's all digital. Yeah. Everything is digital, firstly. So you're promoting to all the people. And gigs, you can travel on weekends for gigs to play outside your hometown. Internet pe community bana lo. Internet pe kahi apni, everybody can find their uh, click, you know. You can find your people. Doesn't matter, people are, it doesn't matter where you're based. I live in Goa. Like, it means absolutely nothing. Like, <laughs> people think I live in some Bombay, Delhi. I'm like, no, I live in Goa. It doesn't matter, everything is online, you know? So, it, so, so it's great that you're helping your family with the business, great. But weekends, you can travel and do shows, right? You can make music, you can release them online. That doesn't change where you're releasing it. Marketing is all online, doesn't change where you're based. And you can like an alternate way, like for me, you, you can just you know, like go offline in your city because like no matter which city you are in in India, like that's like there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people in every city. You will find people like you, and you know, like you can start offline busking. You can start meeting up each other, right? And just because just like you are looking for audience, even they are looking for audience. So yeah, I know it's a bit it's a bit uh, tiresome. It's tiring to look for people. It's exhausting sometimes. But in the long run, it pays off. Like at least for me, like that's. We had a quote back then in Jaipur that if you have to perform at an open mic, you have to organize one. Okay, and that's what I did. <laughs> right? So I think like you'll find some people there. Yeah, too. Okay, last sure. question. Uh, hello, hi. I am Akash. I am a music composer. So recently, what I have did uh, is I have opened a place and that's the Dali House. So there, I usually what I do is I call original musicians, who are Indian artists, and I call them. And I do a ticketed event, a small like for 15 people only. But the thing is, uh, now, you know, I have started this thing, but usko grow kaise karna hai, how to, you know, capitalize it. Sorry, what is the event? The place is called the Dali House. Dali as in, you know, tree ka branch. Mm -hmm. That's why. And uh, yeah, so isme I am calling all India artists to perform and it's a ticketed event. So I want, ki na wahan pe jitte bhi audience aara hai, Uska jo bhi revenue ikhatta ho raha hai, it should go to artists as well. Because maha pe, we are playing only originals and nothing else. And how long ago did you start this? Like, I have started this like three months ago and we have done three gigs as of now. Three artists? No, 
uh, with total six artists. Okay. It will take time to grow firstly. It takes time to grow and evolve. But um, do you sell drinks and food? Yeah, it's a BYOB thing. So, so, so maybe, so the first step would be maybe tie up with an alcohol brand or a kombucha brand or whatever. I'm just giving an example. Because okay. alcohol is licensed. Yeah, so, obviously. a kombucha brand or whatever. And ask them for stock. See, paise, sponsorship is the next step. Sponsorship, getting sponsorship of money is harder than getting sponsorship of stock. Where they give you a case, two case, 30 cases, whatever. Okay. So, say they give you a 30 cases of kombucha. You sell them. People are there to drink. Don't stop the BYOB thing and be like, okay, what we serve is what you buy. Okay. Right? So that's another income coming in. Right? Eventually, ask for money from sponsors. But in order to do that, you have to prove to them that you have a reach. So tie up yeah. with music magazines that can help you increase your reach. Because nobody's going to give you money unless you're, unless they get something out of it. Yeah, obviously. Okay. I okay. think this can be a longer discussion. We can... Okay. <laughs> hmm. uh, the mic, the last one. The button. <laughs> check, check. Hi, Ritnika. Hello. Hi, Chukanya. Hi, uh, Ankush. Quick question. I know that there is another session after that. I just wanted to quickly uh, check with. Uh, Sukanya, uh, what lies ahead with Humming Art? I mean, I see that you're doing a lot of offline events as well now, apart from being a publication. Yeah, we just did our first one uh, two months back, which was, uh, we were very happy with the response. Uh, so the hope is that we'll have more sponsors this time now with the next edition. Uh, the idea is to do a couple of more of those in Delhi and then take them to more cities. Um, we've begun work on the next edition of the magazine. We, uh, this year in November, we are completing five years. So we are doing a thank you. Congratulations. Uh, we are doing actually a we are, we are doing a nice podcast series. You'll hear about it in a month or so. And um, our artist fund is growing. Hopefully, we'll have a little more support on that going forward. So we'll be able to support more artists via the fund. Yeah. And uh, next next year onwards, um, one of the problems I, I spoke about that yesterday also. One of the problems that we are facing at AHH is a lack of good writers and what we realize is that a lot of uh, people who are writing to us are really passionate about music, what I was saying earlier, but they don't have the exact skill set. But that's also because there is no education for that. So that's something that we want to build upon. Um, so that's something that we'll work upon next year. We'd love to Thank collaborate. You. Like we have a lot of people, Thank you know, like uh, th that's what you know we're trying to build. Yeah. And guys, also HH is our festival partner. Even like they are covering uh, uh, this whole thing. So. Can we have a huge round of applause for them again? <laughs> and like all of you, know, like uh, Ritnika and Sukanya are both available in the festival. So if you have any more questions, let's take, take them outside. And thank you so much for the session. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. So guys, see you around.